All right, guys, before we begin, there's a couple things I have to get out of the way about these belt reviews. Number one, uh, this particular belt toy is not, not to be confused with any of the ones I've already done. Everything I have reviewed so far has been a DX belt, deluxe class belt meant to replicate everything correctly that you see in a common Rider show. What I am reviewing today is from the budget line of belts. It substitutes accuracy for a bargain price as well as a little bit of variety. So please do not judge it based on any belts I have reviewed before. Secondly, there's going to be a slight change for this one because, well, I'm out of shoestrings to modify this belt. So I thought maybe something a little bit more mm, controllable than my shaking gut to display a belt on. Which upsets me because that's how the toy is played with, so I feel that's how it should be reviewed. But I admit there are nicer things to look at. So for this review, let me introduce you to the Ride Bucket. Yes, is this normal bucket might not seem like much, but now it is a pivotal tool for reviewing Kamen Rider belts. Because this will allow me to display it without actually moving it around. So, here we begin the review for the Triple Change Henshin Belt, Volume 3. There are three of these belts now, as according to the volume thing I just mentioned. And this is the current budget line for Kamen Rider. Now, what is the difference? Well, these are not to be confused with fully fledged belts. They do have limited function and limited usage. However, they make up for it in sheer variety. They all share this basic belt design. This is pretty generic designing for pretty much any rider belt. You can see there's some contrast, some nice molded details, some contrasting textures, just like most belts have. This is a major feature of three little lights in here and one giant button which activates pretty much every noise. Now in this form, yeah, it does make one noise. If I actually have it turned on, which I don't. I don't know why it makes one of Common Rider Excel's noises, but that's what it does. You can see those three lights lighting up. Every belt in this line does that. They all use the same belt, they're just programmed differently to respond to different plates. What do I mean by plates? Well, in order to actually make this work, we need to change the plate on the front, which currently there is none. So we're going to start with Ryuki. You can see his advent deck and belt is fully represented here. Well, it's a little simplified down, of course. But you can see the detailing is nice. You get the button there and what would be the light on top. Unfortunately, not a light here. And the deck itself does not remove. This is just one static piece. Typically on these belts, one of them will have some motion features while the others are solid molded pieces. So this is the belt's main rider. So it gets to have one extra function. So we start by attaching these little red clips to these little red posts. If I can get this done in one shot. There we go. And you heard the activation noise I'm talking over it though. There we go. Now, just like the normal belt, we slide the deck all the way in to activate henshin noise. Pretty standard stuff. Now, that's pretty much all the original Ryuki belt did. There's a card drawing noise and of course cards here, which it, this one doesn't have, but that's it for major sound effects. So now if we hit the button, we'll get one extra. So that's the advent noise from the uh, drag visor weapon, as well as drag gretter roaring. It's a nice little bonus, and in a weird way, even though this is the budget belt, it actually makes a couple more noises than the original one does, which is kind of a strange dichotomy. Now, I haven't mentioned it before, and unfortunately I don't have another belt handy at the moment. Well, actually I do. I have actually one belt handy at the moment, just to show you. These are much smaller than your typical henshin belt. 
as you can see by this one that I may or may not know. Uh, yeah, they're about half the size, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So that's pretty much what you get. It's, it is the legend size. Just like the Legends belts from the Decade series, they're tiny. So, you know, that's one reason why they're budget. Now, let's see what else I can do. We pop that off. Comes off nice and clear. Let's move to the second Gatak. This is interesting. This is the first time a triple change belt has had a secondary rider, and the second time it's repeated a series. Kabuto had a plate in the second volume of this series. Uh, the Gatak Zector nicely represented. Most of the detailing is correct. That loop on the end formed by the horns I thought was a cheap molding trick, but no, the original had that too. You can see the gold painted detail in the inside of the in the inside of the horns, fully painted legs up on top, and the button here with a little bit of the silver and translucent red. It is a squashed version of the Zector. I will admit that. Now. Let's, ha let's see what noises it makes. Line up the clips, lock on. That's a familiar noise if you know uh, Kabuto. I think they missed a point here because that should have did the no normal henshin noise because that's what happens with the real belt, but I digress. Let's hear that normal henshin noise. Nice and simple, not the full armor up sound effect, though I don't have the original Gatak Zector to compare it to, unfortunately. There's one more noise for this one, though, so we'll hit the button one more time. I really, really like the voice of the Gatak Zector. As you can hear, it is very, very nicely replicated, and those are pretty much the main noises you need. Unfortunately, in the writer form, this is supposed to be folded up and down. Unfortunately, the horns don't move. If you have the Volume 2 belt, uh, Kabuto's moves. So each belt seems to only have one that actually has motion involved. So, give and take, like I said, it's the budget belt. I still find this very neat, and if you can't find the Gatak Zector, it's a suitable replacement. It's cheap, at least. So, that is the Gatak plate. I'll pry that off. You can see why this is the budget line, because so far, you only get two noises each, and the final one only has one noise. Uh, I think the original belt had a little bit more, but this is pretty much the standard uh, this is the first time we also got to see the lights in effect, too. Unfortunately, Ryuki's belt is the only one that has no lights, so that's a little bit disappointing. But, for these drawbacks, there is one thing and one thing alone that makes up for this, and it's the whole reason I bought this belt, and it's the reason people were just... <laughs> people were knocking down my door when they found out this belt could do this. STRONGER! Everyone should know by now, Stronger is my favorite Showa-era rider, and he's never had a Henshin Belt toy. This is the first time. As we can see, it is pretty much Stronger's standard belt buckle, though his is a little bit different, considering uh, back then it wasn't the buckle that was the focus. This went all the way around, and this was just kind of an emblem. He didn't really Henshin with his belt, but I don't care. It's here. I love it. So... We attach, which, honestly, this is the one that looks the worst on this belt, I will admit. There's that old bike revving noise, which matches the old Showa riders, too. So, I have no qualms over that. This is pretty much the plate that matches the belt the worst. Uh, Gatak and Ryuki, they, they work a little bit better. So, mm, mileage may vary. It's an aesthetic thing. This one... Uh, Showa riders only have one noises associated with them, unless you're Amazon, in which case you got lucky. But uh, the previous belts also did this. Black and V3 were featured in Volume 2, and they only had one sound each. So you take what you can get. So let's hear Stronger's henshin.
That is a 70s sound effect if I ever heard it. Do love the little electricity crack in there. Now, this pretty much ends the review. That's just about everything this belt can do. As I said, it's the budget line, so it's more limited. On the upside, it's like half the cost of a normal belt. And you do get quite a lot of variety when it comes to this particular henshin belt. Now, if you're interested in this, I highly recommend Hobby Link Japan, who provided this belt to me. I recommend them because, from what I've seen, they're the only ones willing to ship this SAL. I tried ordering elsewhere, it came up EMS, not friendly. But, if you are in the market for any of these riders, or if you're like me, and you feel stronger just has to have a henshin belt, this, this is an ideal piece to have. And it gives you a nice little variety of belts if you really want to get into this kind of collecting. It's a nice starter point if you're not sure if the belt thing is for you. So, even though it is limited, there are a lot of merits to something like this.